Many small fish were born in our high tech aquarium. One of them was a weak disabled fish Johnny. Also, there was a strong Spartacus who got to the big fish. Now you'll find out what happened next and whether they managed to survive. At the beginning of their life, the juveniles need very fine food, because they have very small mouths. For this reason, in the previous video, we put microscopic eggs of small crayfish on the radiator. And in 24 hours, small white creatures with yellow bellies full of nutrients started to hatch. Now all we have to do was take the sea monkeys into a dropper and release them into the tank with the fish. In a moment, a great feast began, in the process of which each grappe wanted to swallow as many crustaceans as possible. The only thing Spartacus could do was observe this lunch in the kindergarten through a thick glass. Later, we were running out of the sea monkeys, so we took the usual granulated food and carefully crushed it with a hex key. This made the food fine enough for the juveniles to swallow. And they happily pounced on these small nutritious particles falling from the sky. Sometimes they fought over them, and from time to time they just took turns chewing and spitting out the same piece. The only thing that marred the scene was the disabled Johnny, who swam very poorly, and I guess I know the reason. In addition to having a deformed tail, he apparently has a problem with the swim bladders, which are air pockets inside the fish's body that provide it with neutral buoyancy. Therefore, Johnny had to work hard with his fins and tail to stay afloat, overcoming gravity and applying much more effort than all the other fish. He got tired very quickly, sank to the bottom and felt sad. In the meantime, Spartacus was sharing a tank with large fish. It was difficult for him to live among potential predators, but thanks to a large space for swimming, he grew faster than the other juveniles. Occasionally, we put a small shrimp into the beaker to clean the bottom from the uneaten food. In a few days, we realized that if all the juveniles swam in the aquarium, they would grow as fast as Spartacus. Therefore, we used a net to catch these two monsters and then transferred them to a more modest aquarium. But also with all the required convenience, such as aeration and heating. Where they would stay for some time until we decided what to do with them. Finally, we can release all the little fish into a large aquarium where they can swim, play and grow properly. All except Johnny. We left him in the beaker since he can't swim in the deep water. Thus, he will always lie on the bottom and won't be able to reach the surface to get food. For now, he will remain in his isolated room. However, there are some advantages. We have left the last supplies of crustaceans and all the food coming into the tank will belong only to him. The other fish will watch his meals with envy, but they can't do anything about it. Johnny is sick and he requires all the best we have. To keep a constant eye on what is happening in the aquarium and Johnny's condition, I decided to drain some water of the tank to make it lighter and put it on a table near my workplace, where I write scripts and edit videos. After all, juveniles are highly sensitive to any changes or stressful situations, so now I just turn my head and see everything that happens there and I can instantly react if necessary. The plants floating on the surface began to grow rapidly and split into separate bushes, which were connected to the mother bush with these stems. The grass also took root, and it should be occasionally trimmed with these long curved scissors, just like a real lawn. Despite the rapid growth, there were periods when the leaves of the large plants actively died off. Naturally, the shrimps tried to dispose of them. Still, I often had to remove them by hand in order to provide a healthy habitat for the fish. As time passed, all the fish grew and developed, but Johnny grew much slower and was smaller than the other fish. I don't know if it happened just because he stayed in a small vessel or because he was born special. Look how small he is compared to the huge Spartacus. 
At one point, we concluded that the juveniles were ready to fight with large live food for adult fish. We bought a pack of these creatures, which I called water dragons. After all, if you look at their structure closer, then in addition to thin spikes on the body, we see a very strange head resembling the head of some dragon or even an alien creature from a horror movie. Let's catch some dragons in a dropper and release them into the tank to check the grappy's reaction. At first, they were shocked by so many strange uninvited guests, but later, within a couple of seconds, they decided to attack and began to pounce on the monsters, apparently realizing that they were quite tasty. Dragons were not going to give up and desperately broke out of the strong guppies' mouths. But they didn't have a single chance, because their horrifying appearance could scare away a person, but not a small stupid fish, which doesn't even understand what looks beautiful and what is scary. The army of the fish fiercely devoured these little aliens, which didn't even fit in their bellies, so they gradually swallowed them more and more, apparently digesting one part of the worm while the opposite part was sticking out. When the number of dragons reduced, the fish began to fight over them, grabbing the prey from different sides and trying to rip it into two pieces. We also decided to let such a dragon in Johnny's beaker, but this creature was too big and only frightened him. Note that the unfortunate guy rubs his belly against the glass while swimming on the bottom. If we released him into the aquarium, his tummy would rub against the rocks. That's another reason why he's still staying in his beaker. One day, the Chinese watched our video and sent us these balls, claiming they contain some useful minerals for shrimps. I wasn't sure about it, but I still decided to place them inside the aquarium. And sometimes, the shrimp did climb onto the ball and picked something off of them. Several days later, I found Johnny's cup lying on the bottom for some unknown reason. Oh no, it looked like Johnny had gotten out of it and was now in danger somewhere in the aquarium. We immediately started looking for him everywhere, pushing away the leaves of the plants, but we couldn't find him, considering his tiny size. We had no other choice but to remove all the objects and plants from the aquarium one by one, hoping that it would facilitate the task and we would be able to see him behind the moss or rocks. Moreover, we even removed all the fish so they couldn't interfere with the search, Unfortunately, it didn't work, and I feared the worst. Johnny could be sucked through the filtration gate, where the pump draws water for filtration. After all, I know that the pump has knives that grind up everything that passes through it. I carefully pulled out all the filters hoping that Johnny had managed to linger in one of them, and searched for him in the compartments for those filters using a flashlight. You can't even imagine how delighted I was when I saw a small trembling fish staying in total darkness in this eerie space. It was Johnny. Using a tube, I managed to suck him out of there along with the water into the bucket with the other fish. Take a look. There he is, lying by the rocks. You scared us, Johnny. Please don't run away from the cup ever again. The search took about an hour. As a result, the aquarium turned into a muddy puddle. Hopefully, the filters of the smart aquarium will do their job. We'll restore everything and continue to take care of the fish and keep poor Johnny alive.